Hello everybody, welcome back to Revive Wisdom. As always, I've been your host, Zero Yeti, and let's move it into it. What's the first sound of the week being the Nine-Banded Armadillo, also known as the Nine-Banded Long-Nose Armadillo, or the Common Long-Nose Armadillo. It is a medium-sized mammal found in North, Central, and South America, making it the, wise, the most widespread species of armadillo on Earth. This distribution success is in large part due to its remarkable adaptability, as it can be found throughout a wide range of habitats from tropical rainforest, temperate woodland, to prairies and grassland, to scrubland, to even swamps and wetlands. Nine banded armadillos are generally insectivores, feeding primarily upon beetles, grubs, ants, termites, worms, and occasionally supplementing their diet with amphibians, eggs, small reptiles, small mammals, fungi, tubers, fruits, and seeds. And they are known to have a symbiotic relationship with fan tailed warblers wherein the birds fall behind the armadillos, eating the various small animals the armadillos unearth in exchange for warning said armadillo of nearby dangers. Uh, armadillos themselves are eaten by cougars, Mayan wolves, coyotes, black bears, bush dogs, jaguars, alligators, bobcats, and large raptors. If alarmed, Nine-band armadillos can flee with surprising speed off into a shallow trench or burrow where predators are rarely able to dislodge the animal once it has wedged itself inside. Nine-band armadillos typically only forage at night, spending their days in up to 25-foot-long burrows, which they occasionally share with skunks, cotton rats, rabbits, burrowing owls, pine snakes, tortoises, and rattlesnakes. These generally solitary animals typically only congregate during the two- to three-month-long mating season, uh, which occurs from July to August in the Northern Hemisphere and November to January in the Southern Hemisphere. After a four-month-long gestation period, mother armadillos typically give birth to four identical offspring, which will remain with the mother for around six to eight months. Nine-band armadillos often reach sexual maturity at around the age of 12 months and reproduce every year for the rest of their 12 to 15 year long lifespan. Next up is the emu, which is a species of large, flightless rati, endemic to mainland Australia, and is the only extant member of its genus, Dromaeus. Uh, measuring upwards of 6 feet in height, 5 feet in length, and 130 pounds in weight, is the third largest species of living bird after its ratite relatives, the common and Somali ostriches. Although flightless, emus have vestigial wings that sport a small claw at the tips. Uh, emus will flap these wings when running, uh, perhaps as a means to stabilize themselves when moving fast. The head and upper neck are light blue in color, and the downy feathers are typically a mix of gray and brown. Uh, the bare, brownish blue legs are remarkably long, and each ending in a three clawed foot. Due to their highly specialized pelvic limb musculature, they can run upwards of 30 miles per hour for prolonged periods of time. Emus live in various habitats across Australia, both inland and near the coast, often referring savannas, riverside woodland, and tropical dry forest. Uh, here they typically feed upon both native and introduced plants, particularly acacia, casuarina, and various grasses. Additionally, they regularly feed upon insects and other arthropods, and less frequently upon carrion. Emus themselves are preyed upon by dingoes, wedge-tailed eagles, and crocodiles. Emus are diurnal birds that spend their days foraging, bringing their plumage with their beak, dust bathing, and resting. They are generally gregarious birds, apart from the breeding season, uh, and while some forage, often others will remain vigilant for, to the, each other's mutual benefit. They are able to swim if necessary, although they rarely do so unless an area is flooded or they need to cross a river. Emus form breeding pairs during the summer months of December and January, and may remain together for about five months. Female emus court males using elaborate calls and displays, and if the male accepts the advances, uh, he will construct the ru a rough nest in a semi-sheltered hollow in the ground, using bark, grasses, sticks, leaves, and other foliage to line it. Excuse me. The female will deposit between 5 and 15 green eggs over a period of several days, which are then incubated by the male for a period of around 56 days, the chicks reach uh, before hatching. The chicks reach sexual maturity at around six months of age, but may stay with their father for over a year. Under ideal conditions, an emu may live upwards of ten years. The blue-tailed damselfly, also known as the common blue tail, the marsh blue tail, the ubiquitous blue tail, the African blue tail, and the Senegal golden dartlet, is a widespread damselfly of the family Co Conan Gryonidae and they are native throughout Africa, the Middle East, Southern, and Eastern Asia. 
Here they typically inhabit wetlands, marshes, weedy ponds, slow-moving streams, and billabongs. As adults, these damselflies catch and eat flies, mosquitoes, water fleas, and other small arthropods. It is a small damselfly with black-capped, bluish-green eyes. Its thorax is often black on the dorsum and greenish-blue on the sides. Its abdomen is patterned with segments of black, green, blue, and khaki yellow. The green on the thorax and, and abdomen may turn into blue in both males and females as they age. When hunting, the blue-tailed damselfly hovers along the grasses and low water vegetation, picking prey off stems and leaves with their sp spiny legs. When mating, these insects participate in elaborate courtship behaviors, comparing each other's physical fitness through choreographed flights. Mother damselflies lay their eggs along underwater plants and often submerge themselves for up to 30 minutes at a time to do so. Like dragonflies, the young are called nymphs and are small aquatic apex predators specializing in hunting crustaceans and other arthropods until they mature. The nymphs proceed uh, through about a dozen molts as they grow when, and when fully developed, the nymphs climb out of the water and take up a firm stance. The skin on the thorax splits and the adult form wiggles out, and on a hot sunny day, the cuticle hardens rapidly as the wings fully crystallize, and an adult can be flying within a half hour of emerging. Next up is the Komodo dragon, also known as the Komodo monitor, it is a member of the monitor family, uh, monitor lizard family of Varanidae, uh, or Varanidae. It is endemic to the Indonesian islands of Komodo, Rinka, Flores, and Gili Montang. Uh, reaching upwards of 200 pounds in weight, 10 feet in length, and they are, uh, they are the largest extant species of lizard on Earth, with males averaging around 25% larger than females. The Komodo dragon has a tail that is as long as its body, uh, as well as around 60 frequent, uh, frequently replaced serrated teeth that can measure up to an inch in length. As with many other reptiles, the Komodo dragon primarily relies on its long yellow forked tongue to detect taste and smell stimuli, with the vomer nasal sense using the Jacob's organ rather than using the nostrils. With the help of a favorable wind and its habit of swinging its head from side to side as it walks, a Komodo dragon may be able to detect a meal from upwards of five miles away. It is the largest venomous vertebrate, and while said venom is rarely directly fatal to humans, it is known to inhibit blood clotting, lower blood pressure, cause muscle paralysis, and induce hypothermia, often leading to unconsciousness. The Komodo dragon prefers hot and dry places that can be found throughout open grasslands, savanna, and tropical forests at low elevations. Throughout their range, they serve as apex persistence predators and super scavengers, sporting a wide-ranging diet that includes invertebrates, other reptiles, including smaller Komodo dragons, birds, eggs, small mammals, monkeys, wild boar, goats, deer, horses, and water buffalo. These lizards are excellent diggers and can be found resting inside large burrows during bad weather. Mating occurs between May and August with females typically depositing around 20 eggs throughout August and September in specially constricted and camouflage nests. Uh, these eggs will hatch after a 7-8 to eight month incubation period uh, into fully fledged offspring. Interestingly enough, Komodo dragons can produce offspring through same-sex courtship and completely asexual means via a process known as parthenogenesis. And although a similar amount of eggs are laid as in heterosexual reproduction, all offspring produced through, through the, this way are male. Young Komodo dragons spend much of their first few years in trees where they re are relatively safe from predators, including the cannibalistic adults. Uh, and Komodo dragons reach sexual maturity around 8 to 9 years of age and may live upwards of 30 years under ideal conditions. Next up is the red-eyed tree frog, which is a species of nocturnal arboreal amphibian native to the neotropical rainforest, ranging from as far north as southern Mexico to as far south as northern Colombia. Here they feed upon various insects, other arthropods, and occasionally even smaller amphibians. Uh, they receive their name from their iconic large, bright red eyes with vertically narrow pupils. The rest of the frog is equally as colorful, with a vibrant green body, yellow and blue ventral stripes along the side, a white underside, and brightly colored orange and or red feet. 
Additionally, they have sticky pads on their toes that allow them to easily climb up onto almost any surface. Females are typically larger than males, measuring around 3 inches in length compared to the males measuring in around 2 inches. Despite their bright coloring, red-eyed tree frogs are actually not poisonous and rely on camouflage to protect themselves. While sleeping, they cover their blue sides with their back legs and tuck their bright feet under their bellies, shutting their red eyes. Thus, they appear almost completely green and well hidden amongst the foliage. Their large red eyes not only aid in their ability to see at night, but also serve as a defense adaptation through dimactic behavior. When a red-eyed tree frog detects an approaching predator, it will abruptly open its eyes to, and stares at the predator. The sudden appearance of the red eyes may startle the predator, giving the frog a chance to flee. During the mating season, the male frogs shake branches where they are sitting to improve their chances of finding a mate by keeping its rivals at bay. When rainfall is at its highest, male red-eyed tree frogs uh, call through a cacking sound the attention of the females. The females use the same call as well as color, uh, specifically the striped sides, uh, in order to find a possible mate. After mating, the female chooses a leaf above a pond or a large puddle on which to lay her clutch of roughly 40 eggs. Since oviposition generally occurs on both sides of the leaf, Red-eyed tree frogs may fold the leaf to hide their eggs from predators. The eggs develop into tadpoles that hatch after six to seven days and fall into the water below. Over the next several months, they fully metamorphose into young frogs, and these young amphibians will reach sexual maturity around two years of age and live upwards of five years under ideal conditions. Next up is the African forest elephant, which is one of the two living African elephant species. It is critically endangered with only around 30,000 left in the wild, and is the smallest extant species of elephant, with males typically being larger than females, reaching around 7.5 to 9.5 feet tall at the shoulder and 3 to 4 tons in weight, compared to the females at 5.5 to 7.5 feet tall at the shoulder and 2 to 3 tons in weight. The African forest elephant has gray skin, which often looks yellow to reddish brown after they wallow in mud. Uh, the length of the tail varies between individuals from half the height of the rump to almost touching the ground. Its large oval-shaped ears have small elliptical-shaped tips and are frequently utilized to help reduce body temperature as flapping them creates air currents and exposes the ears' inner sides where large blood vessels increase uh, heat loss during the hot weather. The African forest elephant can be best differentiated by the African bush elephant by their pink downward pointing tusks, which are thinner, harder, and straighter than the tusks of the African bush elephant. They may use their tusks for marking and debarking trees, to uproot underbrush, digging for roots, minerals, and water, to rest and protect the trunk, to ward off predators, and for interspecific combat. As their name suggests, these elephants can be found throughout the deciduous tropical rainforests of West Africa and the Congo River Basin. Uh, they, feed almost, they feed mostly upon bark, leaves, and fruit. The African forest elephant lives in herds of between 5 and 20 individuals, comprising uh, adult cows, their daughters, and some adult sons. Adult males are typically solitary, however, are often known to meet up with other elephants in forest clearings, even joining with small herds for some amount of time. As a whole, African forest elephants frequently socialize and exchange members at said forest clearings, indicating a fission-fusion type society. Females reach sexual maturity slightly or earlier than males at between the age of 8 and 12 years, compared to 12 and 15 for males. Uh, depending on the population density and the nutrition available, on average, they begin breeding uh, between 22 and 25 years of age and will give birth every five to six years to a single offspring, although twins very rarely do occur. Under ideal conditions, an African forest elephant may live upwards of 70 years. And our extinct animal of the week is Dimorphodon, which is a genus of medium-sized pterosaurs that lived throughout the early Jurassic period some 201 to 188 million years ago. Uh, the first fossil remains now attributed to Dimorphodon were found in England by fossil collector Mary Anning at Lyme Ridges in Dorset, England. In December of 1828, this region of Britain is now a World Heritage Site dubbed the Jurassic Coast. These remains were acquired by William Buckland for the Geological Society of London, who classified the remains as a genus of Pterodactylus, coining the new species Pterodactylus. Micronics. 
1858, Richard Owen reportedly found two new specimens, and under careful analysis of both these remains and Mary Anning's findings, Owen found them all to be distinct enough from pterodactylus to warrant their own genus, which he dubbed Dimorphodon. Dimorphodon had an adult body length of 3.3 feet uh, and around a 4.6 foot long wingspan. The tail of Dimorphodon was long, just of 30 vertebrae. The neck was short but strong and flexible to support the large, bulky, 9 inch long head. Uh, the front of the upper jaw had four to five fang-like teeth, followed by an intermediate number of smaller teeth, and the lower jaw had five longer teeth, followed by 30 to 40 tiny, flattened, pointed shaped teeth uh, that looked often like lan lancets. In life, Dimorphodon mainly inhabited forested coastal regions where it would have fed on a variety of organisms such as amphibians, small lizards, phenodonts, early mammals, insects, crustaceans, and other arthropods. Recent studies have shown Dimorphodon was actually a rather poor flyer. Uh, its wings are proportionally short in relation to the body, and its skeleton is rather robust, making long-distance flight quite laborious. As such, it is thought Dimorphodon spent much of its life on the ground or in trees, only flying for short distances to ca help catch prey or to escape danger, in a manner similar to modern fowl, tinamos, and woodpeckers. As always, take care to my guys, gals, and non-binary pals.